man. Feels great to be a Tiger fan. Nah, every day is great to be a Tiger fan, no matter what. Yeah. Man. Savage Tiger here. And I'm here to... I'm here from a post-game analysis of the Mississippi State game. Uh, I'm gonna try better to get them out uh, the next day or just the day after at the the game. But uh, you know, it's been a few days, but you know, I just get busy sometimes. So I, don't, I don't get around to it, so uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to be better at that. But. Uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Um, great team win. The whole team contributed to this win. And I'm gonna rant for just a little bit, probably about a minute, before I get, uh, get into the get into the you know who you know how we performed, and how each each uh, unit performed. Uh, but yeah. For everyone that didn't think we could win this game, for the four analysts on College Game Day show, they all picked against us. <laughs> I had a feeling, baby, we're gonna come out and we're gonna come out and prove them all wrong, man. That's what we do. I said the keys to the game. Remember how I said the keys to this game was tackling in space, respecting their receivers. You know how our secondary was gonna play, limit their amount of points, limit their amount of passing yards. And I thought we did that. Secondary. It reminded me of the DBU days, baby. It reminded me of the old days with the, with the elite secondary. It's getting better, man. That is a, a good offense, okay? Mississippi State has a great offense. They have weapons. Their receivers are big and physical. And, and they're athletic. And we only gave a couple of plays here and there. Not too big, though. But there's still also some t some technique things to uh, to clean up in the secondary. You know, like how we're used to normally seeing our DBs learn how to turn turn to look for the ball. Uh, here, I don't know what we got here, but we're not we're not turning for the ball too much. But but I will give credit. Uh, they. Um, played good coverage for the most the most of the game because our front really played out that was the most outstanding performance I've seen like we were after the quarterback Will Rogers all night long uh, got him we sacked like we got like five sacks I believe that's solid uh, we a ton of quarterback hurries quarterback pressures and some hits man it was great to see our front play I mean that was a dominant the most dominant they said this is going to be probably the most dominant front in the country, and we proved that, man. We proved it. What a win. Uh, it was a much-needed win, especially a conference win. Uh, uh, it was our front. Uh, even the times where our front could not... Um, Even when our front took a little bit of more time to get to the quarterback, uh, that's the, I still know our secondary played well because the, the quarterback was still holding the ball. He had nowhere to go with it. So our, their receivers were blanked. And then the, our secondary was doing a good job covering downfield while our rush gets to the quarterback. Um, all, all around a great team effort by the defense. You know, the linebackers, I thought, outside of the first touchdown we gave up where the safety missed a tackle, just hit the gap. He, he didn't hit the gap as well as he needed to. He just missed the tackle uh, and scored a touchdown. It was a rushing touchdown. And otherwise than that, we did not uh, we did not uh, let the running backs get loose just like I thought we would. Uh, just like how I thought we would play. We, I think the first quarter we were awful on rushing defense, but then we really tightened up, made some adjustments. Linebackers just solid. Defensive line I talked about and secondary, of course, I talked about. They're, they're just solid. Stopping the run, stopping the pass. I thought our defense 
kept us in the ball game until our offense finally got some points going in the second half. Oh, man, let's talk about it offensively, man. We got a lot to clean up. Um, the chemistry, something is off between the chemistry of uh, Jaden Daniels and Keishan Butte. They just not, uh, something's off. He keep, they keep overthrowing the ball. It just, it don't connect, man. Something going on there, and, and I'm, we're going to figure it out soon. But figure it out fast, man. We got a tough schedule coming up. Outside of that, man. We really, our offensive line struggled big time. It was that due to them. It's they is they are basically what makes us uh, um, how how we perform on offense. And you know, it's uh, Mississippi State got a decent defense. They got a couple of ball players on that side of the ball that can make an impact. Uh, I I just thought we we took too long to get going and. But we did score a touchdown right before the half. We finally got to play up-tempo offense. And that's where this team is at its best. They, that's where they feel comfortable not thinking too much. I think I feel like when we think too much, we over and then we just get a little tense up and we just we get lost. And it's I feel like when because of, when, you're, when you're running up tempo offense, you know you don't have much time to think. You don't you barely got time to think. So you, I think that's where we're most comfortable. I've seen it through three games. Um, Brian Kelly needs to just let him do it more, I think. I realize our quarterback depth is not as great as it used to be. I mean, you know, with one transferring out, you know, finally quitting the team. And the other one, we, I mean, he'll probably get a chance to play this week when we play New Mexico because they will, uh, you know, it's going to be probably a blowout. It's going to be in the second half, probably going to see a lot of backups. And, uh, we're going to see what Garrett Nussmeyer, the backup quarterback, is made of. Because in a Southern game, I thought he threw two interceptions, including one of them, a pick six. Um, he's forces, I, I think, he forces too many throws. And he's, that's the reason why we don't have him starting this year. And uh, But we will see. Uh, I th that's what it leads to, I think, Brian Kelly fearing that Jaden Daniels gets hurt. Then we cannot, we're stuck with Nussmeyer and... Uh, then a, a freshman that is not, I don't think is ready to play yet. Walker Howard, he's a five-star recruit out of Lafayette, Louisiana, but no, he's not ready this year. We plan on redshirting him, so um, that there is that. I get it. I understand those feelings. Believe me, I do. And, but you have to play the strength of this team. That's how they can develop and get better each week. I thought we did that in the second half. We finally executed a little better. The offensive line finally, finally, we made some adjustments. This, let me just say this. The second half adjustments made, especially going into the fourth quarter, what we needed to do to win this game, Brian Kelly did a hell of a coaching job. Well, it's what we hired him to do. We, we know we're always going to have the talent. Now we just need the, pro if we can get the, the best coaching possible. We're gonna be an unstoppable program, an unstoppable team every every, every single year, man. I mean, this year's gonna be we're, we're gonna lose some games coming up. Um, do I hope we win all the games? Yes, I always do. I'm a fan. I'm a fanatic, and I hope we go one and zero each week, man. That's the goal. Right now, we're two and one through three games with New Mexico coming up, and I, I feel good to where this team is. I think we're getting better each week. Um, now it's for the running backs, man. They, what a game Armani Goodwin had. Struggled a little bit, but we we always seen some glimpses of his speed. He broke loose for like a 40-something yard touchdown in the fourth quarter to fight, basically put this game under control, let our defense just win the game for us. Man, what a ball game he had. It was John Emery's first game back, too. He hasn't played since December of 2020. Yeah. He looked a little rusty at times, but he broke a couple of good runs. I saw him actually trying out there. You know, he's going to get better. He's, he's just, it's the first time playing football again after all, like more than a year. And uh, he's just getting back into it. He's going to be big for us. I know. And Josh Williams also ran in for a touchdown to take the lead, to take our first lead of the ball game in the third quarter. And the effort he showed, he's a walk-on, by the way, guys. In 2020, he joined us as a walk-on. He's not on scholarship, guys. But 
he's like a zero that means he's like a zero star recruit and man he plays like a damn four star he gives it all he got every day he does what he what he can he wants it that's what he wanted it to get into that end zone and score that touchdown he played with attitude and i see this team playing with some more attitude i love it that's the culture change i was looking at from the past couple of years to this year and what we have going forward with Brian Kelly at, at, the, at the head coach. Man, I'm telling you, this team, we're going to get better, man, each week. I feel great about us right now. With what we have, we're doing pretty damn good. Um, remember what I said about this year, just go play like you want to be there. You have an opportunity. Don't waste it. I know you love the game. Because, you know, people like me and other normal people, we'd, we'd kill to have an opportunity to play, to play college football at, at a big-time football program like LSU. So, man, go out there and do, just don't be spoiled and act like it means something to you. And that's what I think this team is doing. The receivers had a good game. I thought overall he performed pretty well. Um, I think... Uh, Wabute caught a couple of passes, but nothing too big, unfortunately. I believe he's out of the Heisman race. Probably might be out of the Belenikoff Award race at this point, but I'm not sure. You know, I just hope he gets it together real soon. Not for the awards, but to just to produce for us, to help us. He's a star player. We need him to produce. And I know it can happen. But the big time, the big time, uh, Jare Jenkins scored a touchdown before the half broke he's the one that got us on the board broke three tackles to get in that end zone that's want he's a fifth year senior leadership is showing wants to be here wants to contribute to this team wants to show that man we can do you know this is what it takes to be successful here and that is grit and determination to get into that end zone i love it Malik Neighbors, though, he made a hell of a catch on fourth down. He and he's converted several third downs on a drive where we wanted to go score, where we needed to go score. Uh, it was big, man. It was really big for us. And he came clutch for us all night long. Jaden threw some good balls to him. Uh, man, overall, like I said, this was a great team win. Special teams needs to get a lot better. I thought our kickoff and punt coverage was going to be good. But this game, we were absolutely horrible. There's no way around it. I don't know if we need to, if uh, it's just a combination of Mississippi State having some good return guys. Or uh, it could be a little bit of both, I guess. But our special teams have been bad. But the kicking, we made all our extra points in the field goal, so that's good. I thought we punted well kickoffs as well uh it's one out of bounds but you know it happens sometimes but we didn't get that stuff cleaned up but yeah we we gave up several like 20 yard 20 30 yard punt returns and if it wasn't for one of our freshman offensive linemen on special on the punt coverage making a tackle that would have been a touchdown for mississippi state on a punt return so we need to cover a lot better and the kickoff coverage we gave in the fourth quarter after we took the lead we kicked off and our kickoff coverage was nowhere to be found in that. And if it wasn't for, uh, who was it that chased him down? Somebody, somebody on our defense, I think, chased him down. And he would have had the ball like at the 15 or something. That was just bad, bad coverage. But luckily it didn't count because it was a holding penalty. So it set them all the way back. But if it wasn't for that, my goodness, we may have been screwed. Man, but that but that's an eye opener, and that's the particular position that I want to that we need to really, really, really address. And other than that, man, pleased with the win, man. I really, I thought we was gonna win this game about thirty-four to seventeen, and I was not off. I was pretty damn close on my score prediction. We ended up winning thirty-one to sixteen, so I was like a few points off for each team. My goodness, I. Uh, yeah, I thought that I thought we would pull away late, and we did. So 
We uh, respect the Mississippi State. I think they've got a good squad. They can win some games in the conference too. They they can win the game. They can win. They can surprise some people in the SEC. Um, they they seem like they might be getting better as a team. I I, I hope they are honestly. Like, uh, but uh, you know, I'm glad we got them. And we that's probably like what. 21 of the last 24 meetings or something or something like 20 of the last 23 something like that like we've only lost three to them in the past like a couple like a little more than 20 years so yeah we've really really dominated this series and you know i don't see it changing anytime soon but yeah um very very pleased and anyone who doubted this team Y'all are foolish, man. Keep doubting us, side. We gonna show up, and we gonna silence y'all. Yeah, I believe that's all I gotta say. You got New Mexico coming on on Saturday, coming to town. It's another another night kickoff in Death Valley, six thirty Central, and I'll be previewing that tomorrow, either tomorrow or Friday, because. Um, I'm, I will not be doing a hype and hate because it's an out of conference, overly matched opponent. There's no point in doing a hype and hate for that. So, um, yeah, there you have it. I think that's all I got to say. Um, and go Tigers. You know what it is.